we have planted, growing in a 20,000 square foot warehouse, growing produce every single week to local restaurants. These types of buildings, old warehouses in most cases, with some remodeling and redoing, they're perfect for growing this type of produce. And that type of produce can be grown indoors, hydroponically, vertically, and at a great conservancy of water. We use over 90% less water to grow plants over their life cycle than if we grow them in the ground. The seed right now that I'm watering is uh, some Genevieve basil. Within the city of Detroit, there's a lot of viable space. So we're essentially taking what used to be manufacturing for the auto industry and we're turning that into manufacturing of food. I relate it very much to the same time when Henry Ford was bringing the first Fords off the assembly line. We're sort of at that point, that juncture in the hydroponic industry in the way that we're innovating and birthing the industry here in the United States. It was only when I came into this farm and saw how we were growing and how there's really only nutrients added to the water, no pesticide, no herbicide, that I understood that it is actually quite sustainable and is a good additive to the food system to supplement those other local growers that are growing that natural way in soil. And that's the Oregon peas, uh, dwarf gray peas, and then the black oil sunflower seeds. Starting my business pitch talking about hydroponic systems, I would have to qualify it and say that this is, we are not growing weed, we are growing herbs, but not herb. We're growing vegetables and produce. And I know that from, from our standpoint, our lighting company was able to really grow its business from the cannabis industry, but that came back to help us launch our business growing produce because they had the money to develop these amazing lights that we now use to, to grow food to nourish the world. So how about that? The people that have developed these lights have figured out plants grow more effectively under specific wavelengths of light. So it's actually a combination of red and blue wavelengths that they grow under. So that actually gets us a pretty consistent reduction in growth time compared to full spectrum light out in the field. We are selling herbs, baby greens, and microgreens to our local chefs that are interested in bringing some really flavorful, interesting products to the plate. Brujo pea shoots times four. This is green shiso. It's a small microgreen. We also grow these leaves to full size. Um, it's kind of across the flavor between something like basil, and it also has a very floral flavor. It's really fragrant, and it's used in a lot of um, mixed drinks and um, also as a garnish. A lot of chefs just saying, hey, we're looking for this type of product, this category. We can't get it from other local growers, or we can in the summer, but then in the winter we have a gap in local supply. And then bringing that information back to the farm so that we could start to grow exactly the produce that those chefs want to buy. So this is going to Maru downtown. And then we also sell this in an herb size, so the full size leaf. So same plant, we just uh, let it grow a little bit longer. Now we just hope we don't get a big gust of wind. Thank you. How much baby greens coming? We do. The good thing about microgreens, microgreens are not a salad. They're not something you just put on the plate to like make it look nice. No, you use a microgreen to actually enhance the flavor of something. For us here at the sushi bar, we want our salmon to taste. Hey, like if you want to give a minty taste to my salmon, like let me add a shiso, like a little micro shiso. It'll pop. It'll make it pop. If you want something more on the spicier side, we will add like a like a radish sprout. You know what I'm saying? So that would change the flavor of the salmon. We started selling at Eastern Market. So we're going to be about 50-50 in terms of sales, which is very exciting to see a lot of traction at Eastern Market for these, what I always say, weird things that we're growing here. Like they're not the typical iceberg lettuces of the world. We're growing really interesting varietals and Michiganders that are coming to the market are so stoked to have that in their refrigerator. We love Eastern Market. We had the opportunity to start selling here in the winter months when they actually need more vendors like us to provide fresh greens in a time when most gardeners aren't growing them. We do do a lot of explaining about hydroponic growing, how we grow produce. Some people come with the knowledge that we're here in the city and they just want to taste our produce and talk farming with us, which we love to do. Other people come and taste the products and ask us how we're growing it because the products do have a very distinctive taste and look, a real consistent color. 
It's a very interesting combination between technology and farming, for sure. It's a very different way of growing food, but one of the things that we all notice here is that it still has that life-giving effect on you to be in in our growing room with literally thousands of plants growing at the same time, growing all around you. There's something that's very affirming and very joyful and life-giving to know that we're creating food people are going to eat and enjoy and be nourished by.